Chapter Twenty Seven of Tristram Shandy, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy gentlemen volume one by lawrence stern chapter twenty seven there is nothing so foolish when you are at the expense of making an entertainment of this kind as to order things so badly as to let your critics and gentry of refined taste run it down nor is there anything so likely to make them do it as that of leaving them out of the party or what is full as offensive of bestowing your attention upon the rest of your guests in so particular a way as if there were no such thing as a critic by occupation at table i guard against both for in the first place i have left half a dozen places purposely open for them and in the next place i pay them all court gentlemen i kiss your hands i protest no company could give me half the pleasure by my soul i am glad to see you i beg only you will make no strangers of yourself but sit down without any ceremony and fall on heartily i said i had left six places and i was upon the point of carrying my complaisance so far as to have left a seventh open for them and in this very spot i stand on but being told by a critic though not by occupation but by nature that i had acquitted myself well enough i shall fill it up directly hoping in the meantime that i shall be able to make a great deal of more room next year how in the name of wonder could your uncle toby who it seems was a military man and whom you have represented as no fool be at the same time such a confused pudding-headed muddle-headed fellow as go look so sir critic i could have replied but i scorn it its language unurbane and only befitting the man who cannot give clear and satisfactory accounts of things or dive deep enough into the first causes of human ignorance and confusion it is moreover the reply valiant and therefore i reject it for though it might have suited my uncle toby's character as a soldier excellently well and had he not accustomed himself in such attacks to whistle the lila buleru as he wanted no courage it's the very answer he would have given yet it would by no means have done for me you see as plain as can be that i write as a man of erudition that even my similes my allusions my illustrations my metaphors are erudite and that i must sustain my character properly and contrast it properly too else what would become of me why sir i should be undone at this very moment that i am going here to fill up one place against a critic i should have made an opening for a couple therefore i answer thus pray sir in all the reading 
which you have ever read did you ever read such a book as Locke's essay upon the human understanding don't answer me rashly because many i know quote the book who have not read it and many have read it who understand it not if either of these is your case as i write to instruct i will tell you in three words what the book is it is a history a history of who what where when don't hurry yourself it is a history book sir which may possibly recommend it to the world of what passes in a man's own mind and if you will say so much of the book and no more believe me you will cut no contemptible figure in a metaphysic circle but this by the way now if you will venture to go along with me and look down into the bottom of this matter it will be found that the cause of obscurity and confusion in the mind of a man is threefold dull organs dear sir in the first place secondly slight and transient impressions made by the objects when the said organs are not dull and thirdly a memory like unto a sieve not able to retain what it has received call down dolly your chambermaid and i will give you my cap and bell along with it if i make not this matter so plain that dolly herself should understand it as well as malbranch when dolly has indicted her pistol to robin and has thrust her arm into the bottom of her pocket hanging by her right side take that opportunity to recollect that the organs and faculties of perception can by nothing in this world be so aptly typified and explained as that one thing which dolly's hand is in search of your organs are not so dull that i should inform you it's an inch sir of red seal wax when this is melted and dropped upon the letter if dolly fumbles too long for her thimble till the wax is over hardened it will not receive the mark of her thimble from the usual impulse which was wont to imprint it very well if dolly's wax for want of better is beeswax or of a temper too soft though it may receive it will not hold the impression how hard soever dolly thrusts against it and last of all supposing the wax good and ache the thimble but applied thereto in careless haste as her mistress rings the bell in any one of these three cases the print left by the thimble will be as unlike the prototype as a brass jack now you must understand that not one of these was the true cause of the confusion in my uncle toby's discourse and it is for this very reason i enlarge upon them so long after the manner of great physiologists to show the world what it did not arise from what it did arise from i have hinted above and a fertile source of obscurity it is and ever will be and that is the unsteady uses of words which have perplexed the clearest and most exalted understandings it is ten to one at others whether you have ever read the literary histories of past ages if you have what terrible battles yeklept logomachies 
have they occasioned and perpetuated with so much gall and ink shed that a good-natured man cannot read the accounts of them without tears in his eyes gentle critic when thou hast weighed all this and considered within thyself how much of thy own knowledge discourse and conversation has been pestered and disordered at one time or other by this and this only what a pudder and racket in councils about greek and in the schools of the learned about power and about spirit about essences and about quintessences about substances and about space what confusion in greater theatres from words of little meaning and as indeterminate a sense when thou considerest this thou wilt not wonder at my uncle toby's perplexities thou wilt drop a tear of pity upon his scarf and his counterscarp his glasses and his covered way his ravelin and his half moon it was not by ideas by heaven his life was put in jeopardy by words end of chapter